So this next video that uh, I'm gonna put on is a red roan colt that we're just starting. Probably something I, I'm really thinking about maybe keeping. I guess we'll see down the road. But um, he's sired by Godash Leo Hancock, who was the son of Leo Hancock Hayes. And then on his uh, mother's side, goes back to um, Dash for Dash, Go Man Go, um, Hempen, and I mean, there's just a lot of great horses on there, jet deck, uh, top deck, you know, a lot of running blood. And uh, we, we really like the foals that he's producing. Haven't been able to ride, well, we, we did ride one we didn't raise, um, but we bought a two-year-old and we did ride her and we really liked her. And so this is something a little new for us. And then the, um, the dam of this colt is um, Badger, you know, goes back on um, to uh, Mr. Baron Red, of course, uh, Two-Eyed Red Buck, that's the son of Mr. Baron Red, and then Sunfrost, uh, Driftwood Ike, um, a lot of great horses also. So he could be a, a potential, and so we're just gonna keep him. Henson really likes the way he rides. He's, you'll see in the video, he really has a nice, smooth uh, gallop to him. And he's uh, pretty responsive. And he's got a little bit of size. He's got really a nice foot to him. And I don't really care for a big horse, but uh, this is a nice horse and he will have size it looks like. So I'll get that posted up. The video that I'm going to post about this red roan, uh, there's a lot of wind and uh, it's, it's kind of hard to hear. Uh, I didn't have my mic that day and so I probably won't put uh, any narrating to it, but it's just kind of the same as those others. You know, he's he's teaching to move that hindquarters, um, the front end, uh, getting him to, to lope. Um, being comfortable with it and having them just kind of work off of a feel so that'll give you kind of an idea what's happening there thanks one of the questions the other day that uh, I said I would you know answer in a video and that was um, kind of talking about uh, the, the size of our horses or um, do we do we want a, a real big horse what size do we like uh, something towards that effect. So, I personally don't like a real big horse. I like a 14 one to 14 three hand horse that you know has some some body and some some bone to him and has a good mind. That's what I like. A lot of the horses that I first had were you know a lot of cow bred kind of stuff that didn't have you know, a lot of height. Um, you know, size, two different ways to to differentiate the size is, you know, height or you have width and and body. I don't necessarily like a tall horse, probably because I'm not real tall, so it's just harder for me to get on. And, and I've never um, found that that taller horse for me was any advantage, um, not saying I there isn't I just never found that for me so we've tried to cater to people uh, their needs um, sizes of horses that uh, our clientele our customers have wanted what's been successful for us and we're at <clears throat> excuse me we're at um, you know probably a 14-1 uh, on the smallest end and 15-3 at the, the biggest and that's not a lot of them more in the 15-15-1 bracket is what I would say as far as what our average sizes are and that's just um, because it fell into the type of horse the type of quarter horse that we like the bloodlines, the breeding and that just kind of matched that also and so since it just worked for our program as well as what other people wanted that's kind of what we've done and these horses that you know we've started 
you know, our young horses, they're twos. Uh, there are some three-year-olds in there also. And most of these horses don't uh, reach their full maturity till five, um, depending on the bloodline, sometimes even six. So when we're starting a horse and putting 90 days on these, they're, they're definitely not, you know, completely mature horses. And we're very careful about how we ride them and how much we do with them and uh, make sure that they're always sound. If they're not, then we, you know, we'll do something else, uh, lay them off or whatever. If we're keeping them for ourselves, we'll put the time on them and then we'll probably just turn them out for a while and then bring them back in later. The ones that are started and go on down the road, um, what they do with them is, you know, could be the same thing. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't, uh, I'm not able to follow all of them, obviously, but those who check back in or give us updates, you know, are really happy and um, they seem to go on and, and have a great life with them. Checking on the cows this morning. We had um, quite a few of them cross cattle guards. They were full. 
nothing crossed this cut, but this guy I've noticed actually came down. It's okay. I'm just checking them again, just making sure. But um, nothing's crossed it. They look good. There's a little water here on the side of the road, so they saw that. They came over and started drinking on it. So I think everything's okay here. Uh, I just pushed some in just a little bit ago. Right up 25 head. Back the other way, back to the west. They had been here, you can see the tracks. They were here last night, probably early this morning. We left this cow yesterday. She was in the wrong pasture, but she had a new cow. So it's moving better today, so we'll go ahead and see if we can get her up to the gate. A lot of times pushing the cow with the calf, people kind of want to be right up on top of them. I guess some cows you probably can. This cow's a little more comfortable with you. Keeping your distance, she's not so distracted about you and she's kind of searching for where she's going. Coward. <laughs>